Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Beep, beep. too bad and we'll warm up a little bit as we go so uh, first of all happy Mother's Day to all the mothers uh, we, uh, we love our mothers this is a special day for them and we just thank God for them uh, they mean so much to us and those that of us whose mother's gone on to heaven we Still love her and think about her often. So, uh, also, uh, happy Nurses Week to all the nurses out there and Teachers Week. Teachers Week was last week. Uh, so, a lot of special uh, days going on this past week and uh, today. Uh, I want to thank uh, again everybody that's coming to the drive-in service. We really appreciate it. It's uh, very inspiring uh, to see the support that we get uh, for that. And of course, Facebook folks, we appreciate you too. Uh, we thank Beth for getting the word out and doing the Facebook Live for us. Uh, I want to thank uh, our former pastor, Steve. He's been taking it from Facebook and putting it on YouTube for us. He gets it out there, but don't, we don't hardly get finished with it, and he's got it out there, so we thank him for that. I uh, want to thank uh, that beautiful prelude we just listened to. Uh, Joy and Carolyn did that for us yesterday, and I recorded it. And, uh, yeah, mighty, mighty pretty. So we thank them. 
We thank uh, Joy and Wade is going to lead our music today. And I know y'all will be, be glad of that from what you've been getting <laughs> by, by a long shot. But anyway, we certainly appreciate them. We've got a new keyboard here for Joy to play and sounds real pretty. Uh, I want to thank, uh, want to thank Ed for his support every week helping me up here. Uh, thank Dave Childers. You hear me on the radio, right? All right, I think we got something that works now. <laughs> thank Dave Childers for getting us a FM transmitter uh, that uh, we can count on. So thank David. Uh, thank Sam. Davis for bringing this trail up here for us to use as a stage. I thought maybe people would like it this way better. Uh, I had comments from people that couldn't see very well. So hopefully now, no matter where you parked out there, you can see them up on the stage. And uh, so we thank that, uh, Sam for that. Um, just real quickly, I announced last week a business meeting. And so that's next Sunday after the service. We're going to have a business meeting. Uh, we were supposed to have it back in the first part of April, and because of the virus, we couldn't do it. So we're going to do that next Sunday after the service. Uh, pretty sure the weather's looking all right, but if the weather's bad and we can't have the outside service, then we'll do it the following week. Uh, and I think that's all I've got to announce. Anybody know of anything? Need to announce. I know they're going to open the churches back up soon, but I don't know that we how soon we'll do that. I know a lot of our folks just not comfortable coming back in church yet, so we'll just have to play it by ear and see. You know, everybody, I think, likes doing this. Uh, so you do like this, all right? So if the weather lets us do it, we, we try to do this and. Uh, you know, when the weather's bad, we'll, we'll, of course, be inside, and then, who, you know, those that want to come in, uh, we'll just follow the rules and uh, do it that way. Uh, so, anyway, I think that's all announcements that I can think of. Uh, if I think of any, I'll get back up here later and tell you. So, let's have some praise and worship. I would normally say, uh, let's all stand and sing, but uh, let's all sit and sing as well. Splendor of our King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. i 
sound good this morning. Happy Mother's Day. So good to be with you this morning as we continue to worship together and lift up those who are uh, needing our prayers. Did I, did I jump? No? Okay. So we need to be praying for uh, lots of different folks and we need to just be praying for people who are having such a hard time during the, uh, the, the quarantine and the lockdown and all that kind of stuff. The last couple of weeks, I've personally known two people uh, that have uh, died from drug overdoses uh, as a result of depression because of what's going on in the world today. Uh, one of them was uh, a 23-year-old young lady, uh, my neighbor. I, I know this family well. Uh, the father always wears a Superman shirt. And uh, first time I, I, I met him with his Superman shirt on, I said, what's with the Superman shirt? With the big S on it, you know, the Superman logo. And he says, well, if you love God and follow Jesus and take care of your family, you're a Superman. I thought, that's pretty good. If you love God, follow Jesus, take care of your family, your Superman. About a week and a half ago, uh, he came out in his yard and uh, I was finishing up mowing my grass and I could just tell something was wrong and I said, Ron, what, what's going on? He said, my, my daughter died last night. That's a tough situation. So I've listened to him, prayed with him. We cried together. Yesterday they had a memorial service for her. Then this past week, a young lady that uh, worked with my oldest daughter died of a drug overdose. She was struggling with drugs and uh, didn't have a whole lot of money. My daughter kind of adopted her and her family at Christmas time. I was so proud of my daughter because she went out and she, she spent her own money and bought Christmas gifts for this lady and her two children. They even bought them a Christmas tree. She posted, the young lady posted on Facebook how excited she was to receive all these things. She never knew who gave the, her those items, but she was so thankful to God for what she had received. All that to say is there are people around us that are really hurting. And if I was doing the children's sermon today, I, I'd say it's about inviting people into your circle. Invite people that are hurting into your circle of communication. Just talk to people. Call them on the phone. Send them a, a text message or an email. Or You could even get really old-fashioned and send them a letter. How many of you still like getting a letter in the mail? I like, I like getting a letter. I had a lady send me a letter the other day, just a thank you note. And I thought that was just really important. It's so much more important than just getting a text message. But let people know that you care about them. 
and that you're concerned about them during this difficult time. So mamas, we thank you. My mama went to be with Jesus uh, almost four years ago now, and so she's in a much better place. Uh, she had Alzheimer's in the last years of her life, and uh, she couldn't remember a whole lot of what, what was going on around her, but she could remember the old days. And the older I get, the more I remember the old days, but I don't remember yesterday. So I, I, I'm not sure I'm going down the same path or not, but I hope that God will bless me as he blessed her with a good life. So let's pray together and give thanks for our moms. And let's just do our part as followers of Jesus Christ to just connect with people and let people know that we're praying for them and we're lifting them up. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you so very much for the opportunity to worship. Lord, we know that folks have been worshiping outside around the world for, for many, many years. Whether it be on a mountainside in India or out the back of a storefront church in Brazil or at a playground in Haiti. God, we just thank you that we can worship. And that we worship the God of all creation, the giver of life. The God who sent his son to die upon the cross, who rose on the third day, and has given to us the gift of life in all of its abundance. We thank you today, Father, for moms, for those who have gone to be with you, and those that are still here. Father, we know it's not an easy job to be called mama, but it's one that you've given, and mamas take it with courage and wisdom and grace. So Father, we thank you for moms. We thank you, Father, for people that you send in our path every day that just need an encouraging word, an uplifting pat on the back, a time of just knowing that people care about them. And all that is possible, Father, because of who you are. As your followers, we are to follow the example of Jesus Christ who lived among his people, who walked upon this earth, who gave the gift of life and comfort and peace. And so, Father, that's what we're praying for today. Life, comfort, and peace in our world. So, Father, hear our prayer. Give your comfort. Give your peace. Give your strength, O Lord. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Well, again, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but we want to be in thought and prayer for all those on our prayer list, church. Again, uh, you know, we've got a long list of people, and uh, Beth adds to it every week uh, by her emails, and we certainly appreciate Beth keeping us up to date on uh, people that's needing prayer. So, uh, you know, there's several that's uh, had surgery and uh, and others that's getting ready to have surgeries now. They've opened that back up and people needing treatments for cancer and all those things. And uh, we've got people on our prayer list that fall into categories, in those categories of, of cancer and surgeries and those things. So let's keep them in prayer. So let's go to God in prayer and just ask him for, for healing for our folks and for everyone. <laughs> let's pray. Jesus, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to come here and praise and worship you. Father, at this time, we just want to lift up all those that are on our hearts and minds, all those that's on our prayer list that are needing you in different ways. We just ask that you be in the midst of each situation. Pray for those who are suffering from cancer and having treatments. Uh, we just pray, Father, for a cure for that disease. We pray for th those who had surgeries uh, and, and are due to have surgeries soon. And we just pray, Father, that you be with the doctors, the uh, nurses, technicians, as they perform those tasks. We pray, Father, for this situation we find ourselves in, in this, in this world, in this virus, and we just pray again that you would give us relief from that soon. Just pray that you continue to guide and direct all those that's working on treatments and cures and vaccines for that, and we just pray, Father, that you would hasten the time when that would be available to put an end to this virus so that we can get back to normal life and normal worship services and those kinds of things. People go back to work. I know that the, we're trying to open up the country as much as we can, but it's uh, going to be a while before it's back to normal, and we just pray that you would continue to bless all those and that. Anyway, we just thank you again for what you do for us, and just again lift up all our folks on the prayer list, and most most of all, we thank you for Jesus who gave his life so we could have eternal life. And we pray this thing in his precious name. Amen. Sweet, sweet spirit in this place. 
Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there who's a mom or everybody who has a mom. Um, I'm so thankful today that I still have my mom and that she prays for me every single day. It means so much to me to know that, that she's out there praying. And um, it meant so much to me for the first 36 years of our marriage that I had Wade's mom. She was such a prayer warrior. She'd be down on her knees every single night, every single night, until she got to a place that she couldn't get up. So we are so blessed if we have people who are praying for us. And, of course, as Christians, we are all thankful that we have the Lord Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father, constantly praying for us. So um, even though there are things around us that we don't understand, <clears throat> problems that we don't know how to solve, we know that, um, that we have intercession through the Holy Spirit and that God is going to take care of us. Somebody's praying Lord, I can feel it Somebody's praying for me Joy for doing a wonderful introduction to my sermon for today. So we're going to think today a little bit about mothers and prayer, and uh, we, we've all experienced that. Whether you have, uh, as a mother, prayed for your children, or you've had a mother that prayed long and hard for you. Recently, I had pulled out an old high school annual because uh, I got a, a text message from somebody I really didn't remember and they said we were in high school together so you know you you do that thing you pull out the annual and you look at their picture and you go I wonder if they look anything like that picture well probably not 
because I don't look anything like my picture. But as I was looking through the annual, you know how back in the day you used to, everybody used to sign your annual. Y'all remember that? Yeah. People used to write little stuff. So I flipped through and there, there was about a half a page that I'd never even noticed before written by my mom. And I'm thinking, that, that's just freaky, you know, that your mom wrote in your high school annual. And, and I, I started reading that and I thought, no, that was mom's prayer for me. So in Luke chapter 18, you've got to be able to look at the woman there, the widow, and that story and that parable that Jesus tells as one who is concerned about her family and is persistent in her faith. So a persistent faith, a faith that stays strong no matter what happens or what kind of answer you receive from God. Sometimes we... We slack off of our faith because we think, well, God's not answering my prayer. God's not responding to the prayer that I'm offering up. And, and sometimes moms have prayed years and years and years for a child to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and nothing happens. You know, one of the old pastors from bygone years, Adrian Rogers, used to say, God always answers prayer. And he answers prayer in one of three ways. Sometimes God answers your prayer immediately, and it's called a miracle. Sometimes God answers your prayer in time. And then sometimes God answers your prayer in eternity. But God always answers. So if you have your Bibles, I pray that you bring your Bibles each week there in your car and, and you can open up and follow along and that you'll continue to read those passages and look over them later in the day. So Luke chapter 18 is where we are as we continue our study in the parables of Jesus and we'll see what this parable has to say to us today. Luke chapter 18. And, and we're going to begin with verse 1 and go through verse 8. I know that the bulletin just says 2 through 5, which is what I started to do, but I added the others also. So verse 1, chapter 18, Luke's gospel. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and what? Never give up. Always pray and not give up. So if you, if you make marks in your Bible, underline that. That you're always praying and you don't give up. You don't stop because you say, well, you know, my child, my grandchild, my spouse, whoever it is in your family that you've been praying for. Nothing's happening and I'm just going to stop praying. Don't ever do that. Because God is at work and you may not see it, but God is doing something in that person's life. And here Jesus gives us the parable. And he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. Uh, that's quite a judge, isn't he? It tells us something about this judge already. First of all, there's a man who is a judge. So he is a place of honor in the community. And he says he's in a city where the only place you found judges at this time, was in a city. So he's a judge in a city. So he's an urban elite. He's a man of some influence in his community. But he has something against him. Says he neither feared God nor man. So he goes from being an honorable man to being a shameless man. Because he had no fear of God nor man. Second Chronicles chapter 9 tells us the qualifications for a judge at the time. So listen carefully. Second Chronicles chapter 19, excuse me. Verse 6. And he told them, consider carefully what you do because you are not judging for man, but for God, who is with you whenever you give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Judge carefully. For with the Lord your God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. Those were qualifications for the judge. So this judge and the parable that Jesus is telling us has lost that qualification for being a judge. Because 2 Chronicles says if you're going to be a judge, you have to fear God. And here we're told the man did not fear God at all. He was a judge. How many of you have ever met somebody that just, uh, 
In a few seconds, you realize that they had no fear of anybody, that they, as we used to say when I was a little kid, they sure do think they're hot stuff. You know, and that's kind of what the judge here in the story is like. They just kind of thought he was just hot stuff because he had no fear of anybody or any position because he was the judge. And his job was just to pass a sentence, to pass a judgment on someone else. So we have the judge in the story. The next character we have comes along and says in verse 3, there's a widow in that town. So in the same town, there's a woman who kept coming to the judge with a plea. Now the widow lady, is she's kind of at the bottom of, of the social stepladder, so to speak. She, she's the one that, in the scripture at this time, says widows are supposed to be taken care of. Well, something was going on in her life and that was not happening. Her husband had died, maybe he did not have anything to leave her so that she could provide for her family. There's some verdict that's going on. There's some decision that must be made in her case. And the judge is refusing to make that judgment. And she comes and she says, grant me justice because of my adversary. Grant to me which is due to me. You're the judge. Make a decision. I have a tough time with folks that don't like making decisions. You know, one of the worst groups of folks you could ever be with is a bunch of preachers trying to decide where to go with their spouses to eat lunch. Because nobody wants to take the lead. Of course, you guys all know that back in the days when you could actually go out after church and eat lunch, you ask your spouse, where do you want to go? Men, you'd say, honey, where do you want to go eat lunch? And they'd say, I don't care. And you'd name a place and they'd say, what? I don't want to go there. Yeah. So the, the widow lady ha is in a position where she needs some help and she needs the help from the judge, but the judge is unwilling to give the help that she needs. So she's begged him. She's gone to him. She's pleaded with him. And then Jesus says, for some time he refused. <coughs> now, we don't know how much time went by that the woman kept coming and asking for help. But finally, here in verse 4, he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because of this woman keeps bothering me. In other words, she's henpecking him to death for an answer. The, the script, what it really means here, this bothering me in this part, it, it's, it's battering, what it means in Greek. It's, it's like a, a boxer that's just beating someone to a pulp, and they got him up against the ropes and they can't get off. That's... It's not a physical kind of thing, but it's a psychological kind of thing because she kept coming and she kept asking the same question. When are you going to make a decision? When are you going to decide a, a verdict in my case? That battering that just kept on, just kind of nagging at him. Make a decision, make a decision, make a decision. The judge just said, because I can't put up with that any longer, I'll make a decision. Now, we, we want the story to turn on, on something here. We want it to turn that the judge all of a sudden felt something for this woman. He felt sorry for her and her situation. But that's not the case. He doesn't feel sorry for her. He just, it's selfish what he does here. He's saying, I'll make a decision because she keeps just bugging me to death. That's not a turning. He doesn't all of a sudden become an honorable judge. He's still shameless. He makes a decision based on what is going to be best for him to get rid of this woman who's just henpecking him to death. And we're like, wow, what a story Jesus is telling. Verse 5, yet because this widow bothers me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. Just wearing him down. As one of my black pastors would say, said some, see, he looked at me the other day, he says, you know, sometimes my wife just wears me out. She just, just bugs me to death. And I'm thinking, that's what this passage is about. It just, the woman just kept beating on him, beating on him. Give me a decision, give me a decision, give me a decision, give me a decision. And you're going, well, what does this parable have to do with when it starts out? Jesus says what? He told this parable so that we don't give up on our prayers. And it's the idea that if the judge 
who is not honorable but is shameless, finally makes a decision. How much more will God do the same thing? How much more will God answer our prayers because God is a loving God and God is honorable and God is just and God will always come with an answer to our prayer. Verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. It will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that you get justice and get it quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? How much more will God answer our prayers when we call out to him, when we cry out to him? As I said the other week, we, we see pictures of people in other countries just on their knees crying out to God, asking for deliverance from the coronavirus. And we see it across the, na the nations. We see it around the world. People are coming to Jesus Christ in great numbers all over the land. Because what? They're realizing that the only answer to what's going on in the world today is not a government. It is not a medicine. It is Jesus Christ. Because the virus is nothing compared to a person dying without Jesus Christ. Because if you die without Jesus Christ, you go, and people don't like to say this word go to hell and we don't like to think about that yesterday I, I spent over two hours with a member of my former church who has been diagnosed with cancer and he keeps asking himself why am I still here the cancer is pretty bad and he's hurting something terrible and he, and he looked at me and he says what have I done that God just keeps me here I keep praying Lord I'm ready to go I'm ready to go take me home take me home and God's not answering my prayer what have I done that God keeps me here and I keep hurting so bad no preacher with his salt would ever try to answer that question because we don't have an answer to that question I don't know but I do know this about that man that his faith in Jesus Christ is strong. You see, when, when, when your faith is strong, Satan attacks in those little ways that says, God's not answering your prayer. So then start doubting whether or not God's even hearing you when you pray. And Jesus asked that question, when the Son of Man comes, will I find a persistent faith, a faith that stayed true to Jesus Christ through all this, a faith that's still calling out to God, through all of this. What about you? Has your faith stayed strong through all this? For some folks, their faith has gotten even stronger through this time of the coronavirus. And, and they spent more time praying and more time just engaging God's word. And they spent more time in worship. Nowadays, if you are on YouTube at all, you, you can find 10 or 12 different devotionals every day. I mean, I, I saw one the other day and I thought, this lady is just plain, she's crazy. She, she, was doing, she was doing the noonday vote devotional while she's driving down the road looking at her phone, get, doing the devotional. And I'm, I'm seeing the trees go by in the background and she's sitting in the car and she's driving and I'm thinking, I sure am glad I'm not in North Carolina on the same road that she's on. I'm like, pull over the side of the road and do your devotional. But everybody's doing a devotional nowadays. Why? Because everybody's saying, well, I, I need more of God right now. And my question is, if you need more of a God right now, you're going to need more of God when all this is over with. And you have returned to a normal life. Or are you still going to feel the same way? Is there going to be a persistent faith that keeps on going? Moms, we thank you for praying. We thank you for praying. So you said, well, Rob, what, what's the bottom line? What's, do you have a bottom line for this parable? Jesus gives us the bottom line when he says, this is about being persistent in your faith. You see, Jesus expected his hearers to draw a conclusion from the judge to God. 
How much more will God do this? God listens to the cry of the poor, the unwavered, the unwary, the patient. They are his elect. He is moved with compassion for their need and, and surely and suddenly he intervenes with their deliverance. So moms, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't ever give up. God hears you. <coughs> the little boy was five years old. His temperature was extremely high. His mom didn't know what to do. They called the doctor. The doctor said, rush him to the hospital. I get to the hospital and the doctors are checking him out, trying to discover what's going on with this five-year-old. At the time, polio was the first words that came out of the doctor's mouth. We think your son has polio. The temperature kept rising and they couldn't do anything to get his temperature down. They took the little boy and they, they packed him in ice. And that was the day when they packed him in real ice to try to get his temperature to go down. The mother began to pray, Lord, if you deliver my son, he will be yours all of his life. I will dedicate him to you, Lord. You'll be yours to use as you see fit. That mother, looking at a star on a mountain in Roanoke, Virginia, prayed that prayer over and over again. After many days, still doctors talking about your son may not be able to walk. Your son may have to use crutches and braces. The temperature broke. The little boy was healed. Moms, keep on praying. God hears your prayer. Be persistent in your faith and in your prayers because God hears. And moms, as you set the example for your family, they will notice that. They will notice that you are persistent in your prayers. I'm off the set when I was growing up, my mom and dad, we had family devotions. How many of y'all remember family devotion time? Yeah. You would bring out the Bible. And my dad didn't read so well. and My, my mom would read the scripture and my dad would would have the closing prayer. And in the last few years of my dad's life, when I'd spend every Thursday night with him in his home in Big Island, over spend the, the entire night with him, and, and just before I was, we went to sleep, I'd put him in his bed, and I'd say, Dad, we need to pray before we go to sleep. And he'd say, okay, and he'd pray, and he always ended his prayers the same way. It never changed from the time I was a little boy. And he'd say, Lord, Guide us and direct us where Jesus wants us to go. Guide us and direct us where Jesus wants us to go. I saw a persistent faith in him. I saw a persistent faith in my mother. So moms, keep on praying. God hears your prayer. Children, keep on praying. God hears your prayer. Adult children, Keep on praying for your, your mom or your dad who may be going through an illness. Keep on praying for your children who are wayward. Keep on praying for that teenager who's not made that decision for Jesus Christ yet. Recently, I, you know, I see on, on Facebook all of our teenagers are getting to that point where they're saying, well, I'm going away in the fall to this college or that college. And my, my prayer is always, Lord, I, I pray that that teenager has made a decision for you. Recently, I saw one that was going away to school in the fall, and, and I'm thinking, I know that young man, and I don't know that he's ever made that decision for Jesus Christ. And I know that if he goes away to college, he may never make that decision for Jesus Christ. So he's on my prayer list. 
Who's on your prayer list? Adult children? Are you praying for mom and dad to have it easy as they prepare to meet the Lord Jesus Christ? That you would make, that God would make their path smooth and flat and easy for them to reach heaven. Pray for God to direct the life of your children. So moms and dads, if you've got teenagers or younger at your house, grandparents, if you get to see them anytime soon, or if you're doing it by Facebook or Zoom or whatever way you contact your family today, I want to encourage you to have a time of prayer. If we were in church building, in the church house today, I'd ask all the mamas to come up to the front and bring your children. And then I would encourage mamas to grab hold of the feet of their children and pray that Jesus Christ would direct their steps everywhere they go. But you do that any way that you can today. You spend time doing that. And then as we, we think about praying together, I'm going to ask you to do something there in your car today. If, uh, if you're a man in the car, I want you to lead the prayer time. If you, if you don't have a man in the car, uh, someone else in the car to lead the prayer if you're with someone else. But I want you to pray for your family. Someone in every car, pray for your family. I'm going to stop talking. I want you to do that right now. <coughs> I want you to do that out loud in your car. God hears your prayer. But sometimes I think just saying it out loud just, just makes a big difference. So you pray right now for your family. As Jesus is interpreting this parable, he says, he asks a couple of questions. Will God not bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? With a question mark. Will he keep putting them off? Question mark. And then he gives an answer to his two questions. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. That's a promise. When Jesus says God is going to do something, that is a promise. God will answer your prayer. Moms, keep praying. Father, we thank you for moms who pray, who claim this promise that God will hear and he will answer. We thank you, Father, that you are a just judge. And we thank you, Father, that you plant in us a faith that is unwavering. May our faith stand strong. And if, Lord, we see someone around us whose faith is wavering, that we are the ones that come alongside them and encourage them to keep on praying and not give up. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers today. 
thank you, Father, for already setting in motion the answer to those prayers. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. So today, maybe you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Maybe you have some doubts. Maybe you're just asking lots of questions. Maybe it's time for you to just spend some time with someone just reflecting on those questions, on those doubts, and talking about it. So again, I invite you after we finish with the music and the closing prayer, if you just, just stay where you are in your car, and I'll come to you. We'll talk together. We'll pray together. And God is working at Elon Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. God never stops working. Uh, there, you know, there are several sayings going around. One is, uh, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. God loves people more than anything, more than anything, God loves people. God loves you. And God will bless you today. We're going to sing together. So if you've got your window down, I, I want to hear some folks out there singing back to us. It's always nice to know that the congregation is singing. So sing loud. You're in your car. Nobody's standing beside you. If you're off key, nobody really cares. So sing out. power of God Almighty and His wisdom guide you this week. May the love of Jesus Christ be upon your heart. May His words be upon your lips. May the Holy Spirit direct your path as you walk with God each and every day through His name and in His power. Amen.
the name above all names. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yes, I like the music. <laughs> 